Investigators have failed to find a single body. David Parker Ray's toy box, a trailer turned torture chamber. Get the urge, I go out, find me some good looking little bitch, turns me on, kidnapper, and keep her in my playroom for a while for a toy. And this time it's your turn. You're going to be tied or chained in different positions, whipped, repeatedly in your cut mouth and up. David Ray Parker was an American kidnapper, torturer, serial rapist, and maybe serial killer. He was also known as the Toy Box Killer. Although no bodies were discovered, Ray and his companions claimed that he had killed other women, and the authorities believed that Ray had killed up to 60 women while residing in Elephant Butte, New Mexico. Ray turned a semi-trailer into his toy box by soundproofing it and filling it with tools for actual torment. Every year, he would abduct four or five ladies and hold them captive for two to three months at a time. He would sometimes involve his friends, his wife, or even his dog in his acts of actual assault and torture using medical instruments. Then, in an effort to make them forget what had happened, Ray would give them drugs before dropping them off by the side of the road. David Parker Ray was born on November 6, 1939, in Bellin, New Mexico, to Father Cecil Leland Ray, a mechanic and native of Oregon, and Mother Nettie Opal Parker, who had been born in Texas. During his childhood, Ray and his younger sister, Peggy, lived with his mother's abusive parents, Russell and Dolly Parker, on a small ranch due to their poor financial condition. His timidity around girls led to bullying from his friends at Mountaineer High School in Mountaineer, New Mexico, and eventually led to his abuse of alcohol and other drugs. During his adolescent years, Ray developed erotic fantasies of f***ing, torturing, and even killing women. Ray's sister first saw his pornographic images of bondage practices when he was 14 years old. Ray and his sister grew distant as a result. Ray has made statements that lead one to infer that he started abusing women when he was a teenager. On July 23, 1993, Ray Tape recorded a cautionary message in which he stated, I've been ripping bitches ever since I was old enough to jerk off and tie little girls' hands behind their back. Even his first wife was told by him that he had killed his first victim in 1957 after kidnapping, torturing, and killing a woman after tying her to a tree. Authorities were unable to corroborate his account, though. Ray was honorably discharged from the United States Army, where he served as a general mechanic after completing high school. Ray got to know Cindy Hendy, who was working at a state campground in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, and was trying to get away from convictions in Washington State for grand larceny and narcotics offenses. Their common violent sexual fantasies led to their romantic involvement and bonding. In 1993, Ray recorded an audio tape that he called Orientation. He had played this tape for the women that would enter his toy box. Not a f***ing in second. Your wrists and ankles are chained and you're gagged because you're not going to like the way I do it. You're going to be kept here naked and chained down. I'm going to use you for a sex slave. I'm into bondage and s and &M. It's kind of hard to find a willing partner that goes for that <laughs> So when I get the urge, I go out, find me some good looking little <laughs> turns me on, kidnap her, and keep her in my playroom for a while for a <laughs> toy. And this time it's your turn. You're going to be tied or chained in different positions, whipped, <laughs> repeatedly in your <laughs> mouth and <laughs> and your and sex organs are going to be abused and tortured in a variety of different ways. I'm not going to cut you up or do anything that will cause serious injury. And don't worry about being killed. I don't plan to do that either. As long as you don't know me, you don't present a risk. And in a week or two, when I'm through with you, you can be turned loose. Your and is going to be stretched, swollen, and sore as hell. You'll have some whip marks, and you'll probably have a few blisters on your t nipples and sex organs from cigarette burns.
but nothing that won't heal up in a few days. You're going to be tied in a variety of different positions, but for the most part, you'll be kept uh, on a rectangular table, chained down spread eagled, your legs forced extremely wide apart. If your are big enough, I'm going to tie ropes around them and squeeze them with the ropes. They'll also be squeezed with a breast press, and I'm going to put clamps on each one of your nipples with long nylon cords on each one and tie the cords very tight to ceiling rings overhead. I'm going to see just how far I can stretch your and we're going to stretch your and if you pass out while I'm doing this I'll revive you with ammonia inhalants. I want you to feel every second of it and if you piss on yourself I'm going to insert a catheter plug in your urethra. Stop the hole up. The plug that I've got is pretty big and it's painful and I'll leave it in until you're turned loose. I'm going to use an electroshock machine with the clamps attached to your nipples or to uh, metal probes that will be inserted into your DNA hole. Glenda Jean Ray was one of the two children he had with four different wives. In 1986, Glenda attempted to alert the FBI to her father's criminal activities. Agent Doug Belden of the FBI recalled Jesse Ray's assertions. She alleged that David Parker Ray was abducting and torturing women and selling them to buyers in Mexico. However, the allegations were so non-specific that the FBI were unable to arrest Ray. Ray created elaborate devices, such a makeshift pillory and a fur-lined coffin, to imprison his victims. To keep his prisoners from escape, there were additionally complex locks and pulleys installed. Above the obstetric table, where he strapped his victims was a mirror set into the ceiling so that the victims could see themselves being tortured and f***ed. He has been said to have wanted his victims to see everything he was doing to them. Ray also put his victims in wooden contraptions that bent them over and immobilized them while he had his dogs and sometimes other friends f*** them. Ray often had an audio tape recording of his voice played for his victims whenever they regained consciousness. Cynthia Vigil was kidnapped by Ray and his girlfriend, Cindy Hendy, from a parking lot in Albuquerque. After being brought to Elephant Butte, she was tormented while confined to the trailer. On March 22, 1999, Vigil broke free from the trailer after being held captive for three days. She waited for Ray to go for work before using keys Hendy had put on a nearby table to free herself from her chains. When Hendy saw that Vigil was trying to get away, there was fighting. Hendy broke a lamp on the captive's head during the battle, but Vigil slipped free of her restraints and used an ice pick to stab Hendy in the neck. She ran down the road seeking help, which she got from a nearby homeowner who took her in, comforted her, and called the police. Her escape led officials to the trailer and instigated the capture of Ray and his accomplices. Police detained Ray and Hendy. A judge ruled that the cases for crimes against Cynthia Vigil and the other victims that came forward would be severed, meaning that Ray would be tried for each separately. Prosecutors said this damaged their case, as each woman's story would otherwise have corroborated and bolstered the other's accounts. The judge also ruled much of the evidence found in the trailer during the 1999 raid could not be admitted in the Garrett or Montano cases, including Ray's audio tape in which he gave detailed descriptions of his abducting and torturing habits. The first trial for crimes against Kelly Garrett resulted in a mistrial after two jurors said they found her story unbelievable. In defense of himself, Ray claimed that every intercourse was consensual and that the sex trailer was a part of his fantasy life. Ray was found guilty on all 12 counts following a retrial. Ray accepted a plea deal a week into his trial for crimes against Vigil, and in 2001, he was given a sentence of 224 years for the many felonies including kidnapping and sexual abuse of three young women at his house. His daughter was to receive leniency as part of the plea agreement. The surviving victims had approved of the arrangement, according to the prosecutors. Ray's daughter was accused of kidnapping and unlawful sexual intercourse. She entered a plea of not guilty 
and was sentenced to 30 months in prison, plus five years of probation. His wife, Cindy Hindi, was sentenced to 36 years in prison in 2000 for her involvement in the crimes. Hendy testified against Ray. In 2017, her parole hearing was set for that year. She completed the two years of her jail parole before being released on July 15, 2019. On May 28, 2002, Ray was taken to the Lee County Correctional Facility in Hobbs, New Mexico, to be questioned by state police. He died of a heart attack before the interrogation took place. Cynthia Vigil, later founded Street Safe New Mexico, a volunteer harm reduction nonprofit that works with sex workers and other vulnerable people living on the street.